I live in a place uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area that has a lot of Victorian houses. And so I modeled up this scene and I would be happy uh, for any of you taking the masterclass to give you this file if you want uh, to just kind of look at. Um, so I built this scene with this, uh, again, just kind of from one angle, you know, this, this playful Victorian house. So I wanted something that was interesting, not, uh, again, talking about fantastic believability. I didn't want to just model something that was just flat and you know, straight lines and exactly like you'd see in reality. I want something a little bit more interesting, a little bit cartoony. Uh, if you notice from my artwork, I tend to like kind of a whimsical style. I can do realistic stuff, but you know, and I, I enjoy the you know, kind of cartoon stuff. I guess that's why I work for an animation studio and not a film effects studio. All right, so what I commonly see at a demo reels is something that looks kind of like this. Uh, simple mental ray lights, so, you know, I've seen people do, you know, a directional light for the sun with a ray trace shadow. And one of the tricks that I see all the time that uh, bugs me is that people put shadow color. Um, shadow color is a fake. You know, I don't really ever use this, you know, to have color in a shadow that causes this blue type of effect. Um, just because it's not realistic. So we'll do some lighting and we won't, we'll always use black shadows. Uh, and then an ambient light in the scene to just kind of like fill in this, you know, fill in these areas, you know, just kind of give some flat light and maybe a fill light, you know, that's blue. This is a common method that I see that I don't really like the look of. It doesn't look realistic or believable. It looks kind of flat. There's entire television shows that are rendered. It may render fast, renders in just a few seconds, but uh, it just looks kind of gross. So I'm going to use uh, a different renderer. Um, I discovered V-Ray for Maya, um, I don't know, almost two years ago. No, whenever, whenever it came out. Year and a half? Eh, I can't remember. Anyway, uh, it, I didn't really like Mental Ray's global illumination. Some people can use it, you know, wonderfully, but I really liked V-Ray. It was just nice and simple. I'm not going to teach you V-Ray. You can go out and learn V-Ray. We don't have enough time for me to teach you how to use V-Ray. But, but I can show you some, you know, methods that, you know, I really think, uh, you know, just the, the core essence of, you know, what to do with lighting. So I have some lights. I have, you know, a sunny setup, a cloudy setup, a sunset, and a night. You know, kind of go through talking each of these, you know, what I had done. So I'm going to hide some stuff. Let's say... So my settings, I am using global illumination, uh, and I have a you know V-ray light. So I have a, a sunlight here, and the sunlight in this scene is way up here. So it's a sphere light. What I've done with the sphere light is I've told it to. Uh, oh, I hate when that happens. Um, that this light has no decay. So if this is on, it's kind of like, you know, if, if you have this unchecked, it's going to have a, a, you know, rapid fall off. If I turn on no decay, it's going to act like sunlight or like a directional light. The light is going to go on forever and ever and ever. Um, V-ray lights automatically have shadows. You don't have to turn on shadows. Uh, I made it kind of a warm color. So let's look at what that looks like. These renders will take a little bit longer. Um, so render shot cam. It will take a little bit longer than uh, than mental ray for sure because it's actually calculating all those hand you know all that bounce light for you. Um, I have the settings set up here, pretty simple. So uh, I I just put kind of a white shader onto everything just so that we could kind of really focus in on what is the light doing. So but still you know rendered in 11 seconds. So sunlight coming in, uh, it's definitely way too dark in this you know in the background. Um, but you get all this beautiful interaction of bounce light um, that you didn't have to control. You know, you didn't have to place by hand. You know, it works on a kind of a smaller level, so it's very accurate. Um, you lose some control, but, you know, in the end, it looks pretty good. So sunlight. Um, I can do a fill light, and this I did a create lights. I have different V-Ray lights if you get V-Ray from Maya. There's a dome light. And so what this looks like is, you know, this big dome in this scene. So you've got, here's my, my dome light. And this is light coming from kind of all directions. It's kind of like the ambient occlusion node, but an actual light that will have directionality to it as well. 
So this one has just a single color into it. So if I render that, what it's going to do is it's kind of going to give us the, the blue of the sky. Uh, so it has just kind of a flat blue color. I turned it on. You can put, you know, some sort of texture into the background if you want, um, you know, or use cards or whatever. But, uh, you know, this is just so, you know, blue light coming from everywhere, mixing with warm light from sun. And right off, it already starts to look, you know, pretty, pretty cool. Because uh, you get a lot of interaction of light. You get these purples, you know, where the warm light and the cool light are kind of combining together. Um, I can use a, a high dynamic range image in the fill light as well if I want, you know, map a sky texture into it. Um, but uh, something that I enjoy doing is to just, you know, use Maya's procedural methods. So I have a dome fill and this particular one has a, a ramp connected into it. So this ramp will have kind of the effect of kind of dark blue at the top of the sky, you know, blue kind of middle of the sky and then kind of like a sunset on the horizon to so give this kind of soft kind of gradient down and then eventually to like this dark color, you know, from underneath. So if I render that one, instead of just getting one flat color of blue for the sky, I'm going to get this kind of uh, wide variation in the, the color in the fill light itself. This is something that you cannot do with the ambient occlusion node. It's not as accurate. But uh, the nice part about this is you get this, um, you get this variation. So from the side, it's kind of you know this warm light. But from the top, if you look at the top facing surfaces, you get the blues. So you get warms and blues. Um, you can see a lot of artifacts here. This is just because I have my render settings kind of low for my global illumination. But I can easily increase that later. But you get the idea of the light. So it still renders 14 seconds. You know, you know we got this you know, render going. Um, another thing that I wanted to do here, uh, we had talked about implied shadows, you know, or implied lighting. Uh, I could, you know, have a light in that other scene, that robot, you know, office scene where you have, you know, light coming in from a window. I'm going to do something a little different here. I made a, a, a texture map. Um, let me unhide this. I put an image plane, and on this image plane, I have a texture, and the texture is of you know this kind of tree cards so i painted it in photoshop it looks like kind of leaves um of a tree you know i paint that on here let me see if i can uh, not crash this uh so no it's not going to see it because i have it mapped into transparency so that's this is the uh this is the map so black and white map mapped into transparency onto a card with a V-Ray or a Lambert shader. And what this is going to do, because V-Ray is all ray traced, so all the shadows are ray traced, I can just simply just have this in the scene and hit render now. And what it's going to give me is it's going to look like there's a tree just outside of the camera's, you know, kind of point of view. Add some variation to the scene, makes it, you know, a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, makes the, the lighting break up in, in a way that looks just much more appealing. Uh, not quite as arid and hot as uh, you know this was, depending on the look you want. But you know it's a nice trick you know to say you know you could actually put a tree model over here as well to cast shadows. But this this works pretty well you know for just having some sort of shadows in the scene. Uh, and then if I want it as a, a kind of last light, I have this green leaf glow. So this is a a rect light. Um, so it's this one of these rect rectangle lights. It's like an area light. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to give it kind of a golden or kind of greenish gold, you know, yellow kind of glow to make it look like the light that's coming through the trees. It's a subtle effect. Here it goes. It's rendering, 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 rendering. You know, to make it look like, you know, the light that's refracting through the trees is giving a little bit of a kind of a green tint, you know, over here. Uh, you can decide whether you want to do this or not. I don't know if it adds much to the scene. There's a little bit of kind of glow, but that's what would happen with a, a real tree. You know, that way you get your fill light has a little bit of variation of color. So, you know, right off, this has a huge amount of variation, renders really quickly, nice, simple lighting setup. Um, and, you know, you can read the shapes and the forms of everything really well. Uh, let's look at um, running out of time here. Let's look at sunset. So the same idea for the sunset lights. I have a dome fill. 
um, with a, a ramp in it as well. You know, a little bit, you know, more contrast ramp. Um, I've got a light inside the living room. This is a uh, sphere light that I've placed inside the, the living room here. Um, I have the windows that are kind of like a glass refraction. So if I hit four, I can kind of see I have a, a, a light in there. I've got a light on the porch as well. That's just, again, a nice little sphere light. I'm keeping the technology really simple with this. Um, and then I have a, for the, I wanted to have sunlight that's kind of like setting sun. So well, let me just show you these one at a time, just you know, kind of see the process. So keep that, hit render. So this is just the, the sunset sky kind of, uh, fill light and so this has deep kind of orange on the side purple from the top so this is like the moment when the sun is just starting to you know or just has just gone down below the horizon let me turn on the the sunlight here and the sunlight is a spotlight that's uh kind of if i look through the camera you can kind of see it's just hitting the top of the house to make it look like the sun is just kind of cut, grazing over the trees and you're getting a little bit of this deep red kind of light and I, I put a I used a spotlight so I could kind of have this fall off so that it's bright at the top and then it's not just a sharp line it's like soft sunlight that's just kind of grazing in giving a kind of interesting type of look here uh, and let me turn on these two kind of porch lights um, so this light by the door and the light inside the window, and this will give a little bit more of that kind of sun is just set uh, evening type of feel to the scene. Again, V-Ray is amazingly fast for the complex lighting that it's doing. Uh, I used to kind of, you know, look poorly upon um, global illumination because too many people tended to rely upon it for the technology and they wouldn't. Um, they would use it as their artist, you know, they would say that that's the art and they would just, you know, push buttons. And, uh, you know, they, a lot of times they would still forget the, the essences of, you know, good solid lighting of, you know, th uh, three point lighting and of good composition, you know, kind of building things into a scene. Uh, but I found the more that I used it is that there's a lot of technical problems that I have with the kind of the old school method um, of hand placing bounce lights that uh, just somewhat disappear with global illumination. A lot of people are surprised to find out that uh, at Pixar we've never used global illumination. Um, you know, even to, to now, you know, the film that I'm working on now, we're not using global illumination at all. Um, that will probably change in the future, um, but uh, you, we're just using that old school method of hand placed bounce lights. You know, we have pretty complex tools too. Um, but anyway little rabbit trail there. So this is kind of a sunset type setup compared to our daylight setup. Um, so daylight, sunset. Let's do another one. I got a nighttime setup uh, here. And so what I've done for the night is I have the same, um, uh, I've got the, the porch light. Uh, I'll just start with a sky dome on this one. Same type of thing, a bit darker, a bit cooler to make it feel like it's kind of middle of the night. So this is just a a dome light that's a little bit less saturated, make it feel more like it's kind of cold middle of the night. Then I put um, the porch light and the living room light in here. <clears throat> turn those guys back on. Oops, I forgot to turn on the porch light. Well, anyway, here's the, the living room light by itself with the nighttime setup. And here's the porch light. And you can see how quickly, you know, this all kind of goes. And there's a lot of tech that I'm not talking about right now, just because there's uh, there's so much to cover. Feel free to ask me questions since this is a masterclass. Um, I do plan on uh, making a DVD out of this. Uh, it's going to be much longer and cover a lot more detail into these kind of setups. Um, so look for that, you know, in the next six months or so. Then I have a moonlight, and then this is the same kind of technology for like what I did the sun in the sunny, you know, so I've got a sphere light with, you know, uh, no 
no decay kind of way up here and I've moved it a little bit around so that it's, it's kind of lighting from a different side to kind of show you you can you can have a different key position you know you know, you know infinite choices of what you can do but you know get a nice kind of look with kind of a different setup so this has you know make it look like the moon that's off off screen a little bit brighter than the fill light so there's the the moonlight coming in and again I'm getting little light leaks because of uh, my low settings street lamp I'm gonna turn on like to say what if there's a little street lamp that's kind of fading off to the side so I hit one last render here here we go again if you're interested in this scene let me know and I can uh, put it up somewhere for people to grab down you can experiment with it play with it do whatever you want I could leave the V-Ray lights in there if you have V-Ray for Maya, or I could send you just a generic geometry version that you could play with the uh, the mental ray method with the same setup. So, so here we go. You know, quite a few different little lighting setups. Um, you know, really quickly give interesting looks uh, using a global illumination method. I want to show one more example um, of uh, a high res illustration. And, uh, you know, we're kind of approaching the end of, of this part of the class and then a few more things.